Communities in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu generally live in small, close communities. They grow their own food on communally owned land and share things amongst a strong network of family and friends. These communities can feel a million miles from the busy financial centres of the world. However, just like the way that when you throw a stone into a pond and the ripples extend outwards, households in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu are directly affected by events that happen a long way from their islands. During the past few years, households around the world have experienced a number of major economic shocks. Shocks are sudden events that can push a household into poverty. Shocks can affect a local area, such as a cyclone or an earthquake, or affect a particular household, such as an unexpected sickness. Recent economic shocks include large increases in the prices of food and fuel. A global economic crisis has also led to large falls in the amount of goods and services countries produce, and millions of people losing their jobs. But how have households in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu been affected by these shocks? People in these countries live unique lives in distinctive environments. Their experiences of shocks is therefore likely to be very different to that of people in other parts of the world. So what types of shocks do they experience? How do they cope? And are there different impacts on men and women? Importantly, how can governments, aid donors and NGOs help? To answer these questions, researchers from RMIT University, Deakin University, the University of the South Pacific and Oxfam Australia undertook a three-year project funded by the Australian Agency for International Development. The researchers worked together with teams of Solomon Islanders and Ni Vanuatu. The teams then surveyed over 1,600 households between 2011 and 2013. Some surveys were conducted using mobile phone technology. Over 75 focus group discussions were also held. Separate focus groups were held for men and women. Six communities in the Solomon Islands and six similar communities in Vanuatu were involved in the research. These communities were chosen to reflect the different ways in which people live in these countries. In the Solomon Islands, research teams visited White River and Burns Creek in Honiara, communities near the Guadalcanal Plains palm oil factory, the weather coast of Guadalcanal, Auki and Malu on the island of Malaita, and Vela Lavella on the western province. In Vanuatu, research teams visited Black Sands and Olin in Port Vila, Mangalilu and Lilipa Island on Afate, Luganville and Hog Harbour on Santo, Baravet in South Pentecost, and Motalava in the Banks Islands. So what did the researchers find? Almost all households in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu experienced a shock, even in the most remote communities. The most common way that households experienced a global economic shock was through increases in the prices they pay for food and fuel. Fuel for public transport and generators, and kerosene for lamps, comes from overseas. This connects the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu to the world economy. Rising fuel prices makes food, such as rice, more expensive to transport. This means that the prices households pay for food have also gone up, even though a lot of food people eat comes from the gardens. Unlike many other countries, the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu generally avoided the worst of the global economic crisis. While some households had somebody who lost a job or who had their hours or wages cut, this was generally limited to the capital cities. Households also experienced other shocks. Many, particularly in rural areas, experienced an environmental shock, such as flooding and storm damage. Others experienced crop failure, sickness, and crime. In fact, a number of households reported that someone had stolen food from their gardens. How did households cope with these shocks? Land and the natural environment are clearly very important to households in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu in coping with shocks. Most households responded by turning to their garden or to the reef to source more food. However, some households in urban squatter communities where land is limited were not able to do this because they do not have access to a garden. These households often reported high rates of food insecurity. Following a shock, many households also look to increase their income by looking for work or working for food. Another common response was for households to reduce their spending. This included cutting back on the amount of money spent on food, fuel, clothes, 
and on unhealthy goods such as kava, cigarettes, betel nut and alcohol. A good finding was that most households avoided having to reduce the amount of money that they spent on health and children's school fees. The research also found that the strong system of social support based on gift giving and sharing amongst family, friends and neighbours was very important in assisting households cope with the effects of shocks. For example, households send money, clothing and food to friends and family living in other areas. The church was also an important source of support to households during difficult times. However, the research also found that following a shock, some households reduced the amount of money that they gave to their social networks because they were no longer able to afford it. This included reducing the amount of money given at fundraising events and to the church. This needs to be carefully monitored because of the importance of social networks in helping households deal with difficult times. Are the effects of shocks the same for men and women? Women often act as shock absorbers for households during difficult times. For example, they are more likely to reduce their intake of food when it becomes too expensive. They are also more likely to take on additional work in order to make ends meet. This includes growing more food in the gardens and selling more food and handicrafts at the market. However, because women need to maintain their usual responsibilities in the home and around the community, many reported that coping with shocks left them feeling stressed and even unwell. Some women also reported cases of domestic violence during shocks, thereby worsening one of the most prominent social problems in the region. Poverty and well-being. Unlike in many countries, homelessness and starvation are not major problems in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. However, poverty does exist when it is viewed in terms of whether households are educated and healthy, whether children attend school, if the household has access to electricity, as well as clean water and good quality toilets. The highest rates of poverty were observed in the urban squatter settlements, where land is limited, few jobs are available, and social networks may be breaking down. The very remote communities also had relatively high rates of poverty because of their limited access to services and markets. In contrast, Rural households with good access to transport, such as roads, recorded the lowest rates of poverty. This may be due to their unique combination of environmental resources, traditional social networks and access to markets. Importantly, many non-poor households are close to being poor. That is, they are vulnerable to becoming poor if they experience another shock. What actions could assist households deal with the impacts of shocks? Policies should seek to build on the existing strengths of the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Since women are very important in assisting households cope with shocks, they should receive particular attention. The project identifies seven key recommendations. 1. Improving access to land and gardens will allow households to source food when times are hard. This is particularly important in urban areas where gardening land is limited. 2. Improving access to markets. Government and aid donors can assist by improving infrastructure, such as roads and ports, as well as establishing new markets. Women will benefit since they are usually the ones selling things at markets, and it often takes a lot of time and costs a lot of money to travel by bus, boat or truck. Improving safety at markets, as well as providing clean toilets and childcare facilities close by, will help women cope with shocks. Three. Improving access to clean water and sanitation is important to allow people to stay healthy so that they can best respond to shocks. This will also assist in raising school attendance and will be of particular benefit to women since it is usually their role to collect water. 4. Access to education and the quality of education should also be improved. In particular, ensuring that children complete both primary and secondary school and encouraging greater female participation. Better educated households often cope best since they are more likely to find work and maintain their standard of living when a shock occurs. 5. Access to financial services should be improved. By providing better access to banking facilities, households will be able to put money aside to help them pay for things in the future, such as school fees and weddings. 
Affordable credit will allow households to borrow money if they want to start a small business. These things will help households meet their basic needs after another shock. 6. Households should have greater access to overseas labour markets. This can be achieved by expanding schemes such as New Zealand's Regional Seasonal Employer Scheme and Australia's Seasonal Workers Program. Money sent from family members working overseas can be very important in helping households during difficult times. 7. Finally, government-led schemes which provide payments to vulnerable households to support children, the elderly and people with a disability should be introduced. Such schemes have proven effective in many other countries. The ripples of global economic shocks will continue to stretch outwards. People in the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu live unique lives in distinctive environments. The combination of environmental resources and strong community ties sets them apart from people in other countries. Therefore, in order to best protect households from the impacts of future shocks, policies must build upon, rather than weaken, these unique assets. Thank you, Tomas.